Buon pomeriggio a tutti, ben arrivati. Good afternoon everyone and welcome. We wish to thank uh, the foreign affairs ministers of uh, Tunisia, uh, Mohamed Sabri Bachtobi, for being here. Let us show him our appreciation for his attending our dialogue. Thank you. I will be wearing my headphones uh, because uh, the minister uh, speaks uh, Italian beautifully. However, he prefers to answer the questions that he will be listening to in Italian, in Arabic. And he said that uh, it is uh, poetic. It is a language uh, um, uh, displaying the opportunities for the Mediterranean. So I'm going to wear my earphones because I'm afraid I don't understand a word of Arabic. So we're very happy to uh, welcome the Foreign Affairs Ministers of Tunisia here in our country because Tunisia, for some years now, has represented not only a uh, good example, but uh, it is a wonderful opportunity um, linked to uh, a uh, fully-fledged democracy in the southern Mediterranean uh, region where we know there have there has been a lot of political turmoil. So um, Tunisia is setting a wonderful example. Of course, there are difficulties, and we will be covering those in just a moment. Uh, but uh, now I'll hand over to uh, Minister Bratstovici for his initial words. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my dear friend. And I do apologize for switching over to Arabic now. And in fact, uh, it is a, a very Mediterranean language. Uh, as well, and uh, we're very happy uh, to be here with you. I should like to answer your question, but uh, at the outset, allowed me to uh, thank the organizers for their interest in Tunisia. As you have mentioned, Tunisia today is witnessing a unique experience, especially in the southern part of the Mediterranean. Maybe it is the only positive and successful experience after the Liberty and Dignity Revolution in 2011. Across all dimensions, this experience created for the people of the region, especially the youth, on the southern areas of the Mediterranean, high aspirations. It should be noted that the slogans of the Tunisian Revolution, liberty, dignity, and employment. People are longing for freedom. Tunisians across their communities live for this end. They are exercising this in their daily lives. We believe that despite all difficulties, despite the economic and social challenges, in addition to the political difficulties, Tunisians, especially the youth, are ambitious and are willing to improve their situation. We, the older generation, and allow me to uh, salute the ambassadors of Tunisia and uh, Italy. So we, the older generation, We are witnessing different dynamics uh, between uh, our countries, Italy and Tunisia. I have been a diplomat in Italy between 2003 and 2009. So I come back to the eternal city of Rome with much appreciation and longing to this uh, interesting dialogue with my friends in Italy. So I will come back to our unique experience in Tunisia. 
it was marked by many milestones that we need to uh, focus on. This experience actually created a feeling to build a modern state based on principles of human rights, the respect of um, the state of law and the rule of law, and uh, the possibility to um, elaborate a constitution was a very important milestone. Actually, we managed to develop a constitution based on these new principles for democracy and for freedoms. However, we elaborated another ambitious vision to exercise power and distribute responsibilities among the various parties. So we recovered a balance that was lost in the past. Tunisia is trying to avoid the, the mistakes of the past. There is another aspect to the new constitution. In addition to the freedom issue, which is the decentralized authorities. We are trying to implement this new dimension of decentralization after the municipal elections last year. Tunisia started this process that led to another practice of democracy at all levels, whether regional or local. So democracy cannot be practiced by a specific segment of the population. We need to focus first on the citizenship principle that is enshrined in our constitution. Allow me in this uh, context to tackle uh, how we can improve the relations between Italy and Tunisia. Decentralized Power is something known in Italy. We are trying to build networks with Italy. And uh, we are trying also to forge new ties with many regional entities, whether municipal entities uh, or other regional uh, bodies in Tunisia and Italy. So we are sharing this experience with your country, Italy. It is very important for us to move away from the traditional approach. It is very important to resort to the twinning process. We can uh, build networks and relations between our cities and local communities so we can share experiences. Uh, this is a very important dimension in the practice of democracy at the decentralized level. And I believe that this will be the true meaning of the democratic process in Tunisia. We are facing challenges and difficulties, unfortunately. After the revolution, we received an important blow, especially a terrorist one that came in the context of uh, fragmentation of our society and uh, the state power. It is deplorable that this led to many terrorist attacks that were planned outside Tunisia. If you wish so, we can tackle the situation in Libya. We all know that the juncture in Libya is punctuating the situation in Tunisia, especially at the security level. Yes, we can go back to the situation of these two 
um, leading neighbors. Uh, uh, we know that even politically, uh, Algeria uh, can be uh, quite a difficult uh, issue. And uh, what about the relations between Italy and Tunisia? We know that historically these relations have been very strong. Yes, uh, we do agree. But let me briefly go back to the um, establishment and the development, the evolution of a democracy. Now, no one's here to teach anyone else anything. What uh, uh, we are interested in um, is uh, the way you are uh, enforcing a constitution. This has been praised by many, and in fact, uh, uh, that is how you can truly enforce a democracy uh, in many different dimensions and settings, even provincial and local um, settings. Now, from the point of view of outside observers, After a great deal of uh, political passion uh, um, due to the uh, transformations after 2011 and the fall of Ben Ali and the peaceful revolution in Tunisia, there has uh, been somewhat of a slowdown. Is that, a, a, is that impression right? As you know, in every democratic process, there are priorities. The first phase was about setting the foundations for a democratic entity through the Constitution. Some might think that we have lost so much time while trying to develop a new Constitution. However, peoples and countries cannot develop a Constitution on a yearly basis. Many constitutions are outdated in many cases. They go back to more than one century in some cases. So this is very important for us. We need it to allot the right time and the appropriate uh, time needed uh, to enshrine our principles in our constitution. However, the economic challenges are still there. Maybe we are not lucky in Tunisia because we do not have important natural resources. Maybe we are not a rentier country. We do not have important oil or gas reserves. So as you know very well, it could be a curse sometimes for some economies and some countries instead of being a bliss. People are looking forward to the next phase. However, during the past eight years, we worked on economic reforms following a fast pace. The youth especially are waiting eagerly for results, and this requires some time. We know that we faced challenges from the first years, especially the terrorist attacks. You and our friends from Italy, we do have um, the same experiences. We would like to thank Italy for supporting us in this uh, effort. Uh, the um, terrorist attack in uh, Bardo in 2015 was a very harmful blow to Tunisia. The circumstances uh, in Tunisia uh, were marked by the killing of many tourists. Uh, tourism was really impacted by this uh, unfortunate event. Uh, We know that uh, Italians uh, are really very well versed in the history of Tunisia, and uh, they visit it on a regular basis. Before the revolution, actually, we used to receive 300,000 uh, Italian tourists uh, in Tunisia. Today, we do receive 100,000 tourists from Italy. So we need to intensify our efforts so that we can uh, increase uh, 
the rates of uh, tourists in uh, Tunisia, we do need support. And uh, it is very uh, important to, to drive our economy and uh, to accelerate some sectors, especially the tourism sector. We reckon that uh, other activities like seasonal work or manual uh, artifacts, etc. So these will have a good impact uh, on our economy. Allow me also to take this opportunity to uh, extend my appreciation and thanks to Italy as Italian uh, officials are trying to reinforce and foster our ties. Italy is the second partner and investor in Tunisia, and Italy can be much more than this. The cooperation areas and partnership possibilities between Italy and Tunisia are dynamic and can be further pushed and improved. We are holding discussions uh, with Italians, and uh, we recall now one of the best conventions concluded between Italy and Tunisia. We call it the friendship and good neighborliness and cooperation uh, agreement or convention. It was among the first conventions concluded between Tunisia and other Mediterranean countries. It has many dimensions built on the shared history among us. You know very well that Tunisians talk about uh, Anibal and uh, his trip to Italy and Italians will not uh, be angered by the talk of another Anibal or a second one. So we have uh, common ground in Italy and Tunisia, and we believe that we are the closest country to uh, Italy, Rome, and uh, many uh, cities in Tunisia are the basis of the history of the Mediterranean Sea. Our cities used to fight over the power in the Mediterranean. So we need to reinforce our interests so that our capitals will become once again the hub of the Mediterranean that attracts the interest of the whole world. We can leverage our capacities and we can work in order to achieve many shared objectives. We were the first to talk about uh, Mediterranean of well-being, prosperity, peace. Before anyone else, we mentioned the idea of a peace oasis in the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, the Mediterranean Sea has become, due to conflicts and security challenges, a very sensitive area. It has many security issues, very complex issues. Yesterday, we uh, met uh, with the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Italy, Mr. Di Maio, and we discussed the uh, situation in Libya. The initiative launched by Italy has very positive echoes, and we appreciate Italy's role in this uh, area. Italy is among the first uh, to address issues relating to the Mediterranean on the whole. The discussion yesterday was candid. It tackled how the neighboring countries 
can share positions and can try to come up with a unified position to reach a political solution in Libya instead of a military one. So we believe that it is impossible to reach a settlement for the Libyan crisis through military solutions. We, as well as Italy, believe that Libyans need to be freed from dictatorship. We are close countries. I'm talking about Libya and Tunisia. We are sharing the same context. We had dictatorships that unfortunately stifled our freedom. However, we believe we're not living in freedom while our neighbors in Libya are suffering and are deprived from their freedom. They need to find the path toward freedom. So the international community cannot disregard the fact that Libyans protested and toppled a dictator to build a new democratic society. They had a dream, a dream of freedom. Unfortunately, after nine years, their dream couldn't come true. The international community is still silent, and uh, it is accepting that some foreign powers are using the wealth of uh, Libya. This is uh, the main issue for Libya and Libyans. We need to let Libyans find their solution. The international community cannot stay put while Libyans are being under siege. Do you think Libya can play a strong um, mediator role between the different uh, uh, actors in the uh, area? There is a, a United Nations uh, envoy and uh, a, a German initiative in order to uh, organize a conference to settle the situation in Tunisia. However, all the interveners in Tunisia, especially those who are trying to support one side against the other, these are not leaving uh, any chance for the Libyans themselves to settle their situation, to find a solution. Of course, uh, this is the main problem in uh, Libya, and uh, Tunisia has an initiative in this regard. Uh, this initiative is very simple and easy. Many things in life are easy uh, in principle, but uh, difficult to implement. So we are calling for a political and uh, peaceful solution in Libya and not a military one. However, for that, it is necessary for all the international parties to push forward for that. Tunisia will be a non-permanent uh, uh, member in the Security Council very soon, and this will be a chance, an opportunity for uh, uh, Tunisia. This will be a Mediterranean voice in the Security Council. It will be also the voice of all the Arabs, of all the Africans. We will be uh, Africans and Mediterraneans at once, and Arabs at once. We will be this voice that will tell the whole world that it is uh, imperative for us to enhance our efforts not in Libya, not only in Libya, but in all the conflict zones in order to relieve the suffering of these uh, peoples and nations that have aspired to freedom. And uh, in this regard, we need to work with uh, Italy because the Italian people yearns for stability and we share the same values uh, of stability and freedom with you. Minister, we have many things in common. For a uh, period of time, 
in your country, a community of Italians was established uh, before the Bardo uh, attacks, of course, uh, on the beach, a very tragic event. Uh, your country uh, became um, the fifth beach. I'm using the word beach for our country. And in fact, uh, many people would come there and they would retire there. And now we have this uh, um, high quality migration process, uh, I'll call it that, uh, that is uh, seeking other shores, other places. And I'm thinking now of Portugal. And this is uh, linked to the terrorism phenomenon, which of course you are governing very well now. And it is under control thanks to cooperation with uh, law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies of other countries, including uh, Italian intelligence. Now, of course, uh, we have uh, acquired a great deal of experience with terrorism. We resolved it uh, over the years, uh, but there was a lot of bloodshed. So in Italy now, we know how to c control our borders, uh, perhaps a, a bit uh, um, more than yours, and this is simply because of uh, our terrain. We have uh, mountains and areas that help us to control those uh, flows, uh, but uh, you have a more um, permeable borders, especially the one with Libya. So in Syria and Iraq, uh, this would allow the return um, of uh, uh, countless foreign fighters, and uh, some of them, in fact, uh, came from your country. Libya is uh, uh, working one way. Algeria is doing things differently. What are you doing in order to ensure your safety and security and the security of uh, um, tourism, of tourists, which hopefully will begin to return in, uh, in numbers? One. This is an important question, my dear friend. You know very well also that after the attacks against Tunisia, these terror attacks, especially that uh, we are a country that uh, was not used to such attacks because, uh, such as Italy, we have uh, grown up in a time where uh, doors would be left open during summer, especially. So after spending, spending the evening out, uh, you would uh, go back home, you would go back, you would enter uh, your neighbor's house uh, and you would find the door open. What I want to say is that after these attacks, obviously in terms of uh, security capacities and uh, the legal capacities, there was a new legal framework to fight terrorism that was put in place. A very important law was enacted in 2015 in Tunisia, and uh, we also uh, adopted a national strategy to prevent uh, violent extremism. And we enhanced cooperation with uh, friendly countries, especially those that are knowledgeable and that have experience in this respect. Uh, we are a member of a coalition against uh, ISIS. Even at bilateral level, uh, Italy is uh, a member of the G7, and uh, the G7 is working almost on daily basis on all the uh, problematics related to uh, border security. Some ideas might be exaggerated uh, when it comes to the numbers of uh, Tunisian fighters. These numbers uh, are blown out of, propor out of proportions, and some say that they reach thousands of fighters. Some people have less left Tunisia to fight in other places, but uh, most of these uh, were killed in the conflict zones. We know very well that uh, the war against terrorism, especially what uh, was achieved in Iraq and Syria, have, has caused uh, the death to many such fighters.
those uh, who go back to Tunisia would uh, certainly have to cross the borders, and they will be asked about uh, uh, where they come from and uh, what activities they carried out. They are therefore subjected to all the sanctions uh, listed by the law. So I would like to reassure the Italians and uh, everyone else that uh, Tunisia is safe. Uh, it is not l less safe than any other country. Of course, terrorism is striking in many a place in the world, in cities that would otherwise uh, uh, believe to be uh, safe and uh, out of touch for terrorism. However, we need to join our efforts and our interests against this uh, universal threat that uh, we have to face all together. Thank you so very much, Mr. Minister. <laughs> Ladies and